John Penrose has just resigned as the Prime Minister's anti-corruption czar. Uh, let's hear why and what he's got to say. I think the letter's just gone in to the Prime Minister. John, why did you take your decision? Uh, well, thank you, Beth. Well, last week, just before the Jubilee weekend, the Prime Minister responded for the first time um, to the Sue Gray report in terms of the ministerial code. And clearly, if you break the ministerial code in a material way, it's expected that you'll resign. It's the first time he'd responded on that basis. And I'm afraid it left far too many questions unanswered. I was looking at his response over the weekend, um, and it's pretty clear that one of the fundamental principles underlying the ministerial code, which every minister including the Prime Minister, is expected to follow, is of leadership and integrity. Those are core as a part of the, the, uh, the seven principles of public life. He's broken both of those, or it seems very clear that he has. The Sue Gray report says so in terms. It says there are major problems with leadership, and he hasn't addressed that at all in his response. I think at that point it's pretty clear that he has broken the ministerial code in a very material way. And at that point, um, A, I'm afraid it's normally a resignation matter for the minister concerned, um, but also, clearly, I, as the anti-corruption czar, can't carry on um, in that role um, and, until and unless this is addressed. And, John Primrose, you talked about integrity um, and standards in public office. This is a character problem for Boris Johnson, isn't it? MPs are not going against him because of policy matters. They're going against it about the essence of the man. I think that's some of it, yes. I mean, other people will have different reasons for voting either in favour or against um, in the vote of confidence later on today. Um, but this was a letter that I wrote yesterday before I even knew there was going to be a vote of confidence today. So some people will be voting for precisely the reasons you've said. Other people will have other concerns. I'm sure they'll tell you um, if you can pin them in a corner and get them to give you an interview. And, and John Penrose, I'm assuming that you've put, uh, you've resigned, you've put in a letter of, of no confidence as well. Well, the, the, the vote of no confidence is this evening. I, I'm afraid I'm left with no option but to vote uh, for, the for, the, for the Prime Minister to go. Um, and my letter resigning and suggesting to the Prime Minister that he should resign as well on the basis of having broken the ministerial code went into number 10 earlier this morning. And uh, did you hear back from the Prime Minister? Uh, not yet. He, to be fair, in, in his defence, uh, he's only had a couple of minutes so far, so it would be, it would be premature. And, 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 Mr Penrose, just in terms of how other colleagues are feeling, you obviously went home, you reflected on it uh, over uh, recess, you decided that in your position, you had to resign and you'd have lost confidence in him. What have your conversations been like with colleagues? Is this a real conscience issue for many MPs? I think for quite a lot, yes, it is. I mean, different people will reach different conclusions, and I completely respect that there are you know, valid views on all sides, so I, I don't want to criticise people who feel differently from me. But, yes, for many, a lot of us were saying, look, wait for the Sue Gray report. And now, I don't think this is organised. I think what's happening is that people are having to reply to their constituents the Sue Gray report having come out, um, and they are basically saying, "Can I look at myself in the mirror in the morning, um, and and you know look myself in the eye and feel like I've done the right thing?" And Mr. Penrose, Jacob rees Morgan, I just interviewed him as did Kay on on Sky News. He says the Prime Minister wins by one vote. That's enough. That is this matter done. It doesn't feel like that to me. What what do you think? What is he done? Whichever way now. Uh, I I, I fear that that is probably the case. I think it's over. Um, I fe it feels now like a question of when, not if, but we will have to wait and see what the result is. If he, if he has a thumping victory this evening, um, then that might be different, but it, you know, at the moment, insofar as anyone can tell, it feels like the beginning of the end. What's a thumping victory look like? I haven't got a clue. We'll have, I'll, I'll talk to you about it afterwards, if you like. And, and Mr Penrose, just, just in terms of, in terms of uh, the rebellion, if you like, because, you know, Precedent is that prime ministers typically win these ballots, but they are potentially fatally damaged by uh, the size of the rebellion and even the fact that the vote gets called, particularly when you have a 79-seat majority, not perhaps where the prime minister thought he might be. If over 100 MPs vote against the prime minister tonight, that means over half of his backbenchers no longer have confidence in him. At that point, does he have to resign whether he wants to or not? Well, I, I think that the, the question will be whether or not he can whether or not he could carry on and whether or not he can address any of the issues which have been raised. Um, I think it will be very, very difficult, and certainly history says um, that if it's a sizeable rebellion, but I'm not quite sure what that number is, I don't think anybody really knows, um, 
then it's very difficult um, to survive for very long. But we will, we will have to wait and see. I've got two more questions. The first one is, just to reflect, uh, 2019, an 80-seat majority was won. This was a prime minister that had in his power the opportunity to completely reshape this country through legislation and the biggest majority since Margaret Thatcher. And now he's facing a confidence vote. Will he go down as one of the most unsuccessful Conservative prime ministers in history? Uh, no, I don't think so, actually. I think that there's an enormous amount, and my letter to him says, I, that there's an enormous amount which I and I think every other Tory MP should be grateful to him for. And that includes getting Brexit done after the country voted to leave. Um, it includes winning a thumping majority, as you just said, in 2019. It includes um, getting us out of... COVID lockdowns earlier than other people thought was sensible. Um, and it also includes um, leading the international response on arming Ukraine against Russian aggression. Those are all really material. The problem for me, and I think for others as well, is that they don't either excuse or justify a breach of the ministerial code. And, and that's, you know, that, that is the, the, the thing that's blotting out the sun. And just finally, a lot of your colleagues are saying, don't do this now, don't trigger a civil war, don't trigger a protracted leadership contest. It will annoy voters, it will alienate them. I mean, is this a really bad idea that you are going to trigger a leadership crisis in the moment of a cost of living crisis? Is it not a bit irresponsible? Well, I think uh, the, the, your question is, is entirely valid, but I'm afraid it's been overtaken by events because um, you know, the, the 1922 committee announced this morning that the threshold has been, um, has been uh, overcome, so there will be a vote this evening. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see, but uh, I don't think there's ever a good moment, um, but now is the moment. New Prime Minister by the end of the year? I don't know. I'll talk to you this evening once the results of the vote are in. But if he survives, and to, can he? What, what, I, what I'm getting at is, even if he wins the vote, can he survive through to the next election, through to the end of the year? I think it will become increasingly difficult um, unless he can dramatically demonstrate you know, answers, and those are very hard for someone in his position to show. Okay, John Penrose, thanks so much for coming on Sky News exclusively, actually, uh, to talk to us about your letter. Really appreciate that.